Um, okay, public participation accessibility for the March 9th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Pursuant to Executive Order N-29-20, executed by the Governor of California on March 17, 2020, and as a response to the mitigate, and as a response to mitigating the spread of coronavirus, known as COVID-19, the regular meeting of the Planning Commission scheduled for Tuesday, March 9, 2021, at 6 p.m., will allow for members of the public to participate and address the commission during the open session of the meeting via teleconference. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. We'd like to start our regular meeting, our planning, Paramount Planning Commission meeting, March the 9th. It is 6.04. And we all stand. And can I get a pledge of allegiance with Luis? For Luis, Let's do it. Please place your right hand over your heart. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Can we get a roll call of members, please? Commissioner Bautista. Here. Commissioner Gutierrez. Present. Commissioner Weisenberger. Here. Commission Vice Chair Esparza. Here. Commission Chair Brago. Here. Okay, can we review the last month's minutes and get an approval in a second, please? Uh, I move to approve the minutes from February 9 meeting. And I can move to uh, second that motion. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Weisenberger? Yes. Commission Vice Chair Sparza? Thanks. Commission Chair Brago? Yes. John, any public comments? No public comments. Okay, we move on to new business. Public hearings, conditional use permit number 898. We have a request by Itella International to install a 9,000 gallon vertical nitrogen storage tank for, for frozen plant-based food manufacturing at the 6300 block of Alondra Boulevard or 6305 Alondra Boulevard in the M1 light manufacturing zone. Uh, yes, sir. Um, as you mentioned, this item is a request by Itella International to install a 9,000 gallon vertical nitrogen storage tank for frozen frozen plant-based food manufacturing at 6305 Alondra Boulevard. The applicant has operated in the Paramount Business Park, I'm sorry, the Paramount Business Center since 2015. There is an existing 9,200 gallon liquid nitrogen tank at the site and the proposed tank will enhance production of food. Assistant Planning Director John King will give you more details. Thank you, John. Director Carver. Thank you. Um, Commission Chair Abrego and Commissioners, exciting to be here in person. Yep. So get right into it. Um, um, Director Carver gave a, a really good summary. So it's it's it is a, a second tank, second of two tanks. Um, it's that business park across Alondra from Home Depot, and it's in the M2 heavy manufacturing zone. The building. Um, that the proposed tank would be right behind is a 6,609 square foot building. And they also lease an adjacent 10,876 square foot building. They're, and they're side by side. Um, they, Itella International, they really are a, a success story. They, um, with the po growing popularity of plant-based foods, fake meat basically, you know, beyond, what is it, beyond beef and impossible burgers, um, products like that. They're doing very well, and we're proud to have them in Paramount. They have, um, they actually have over 300 employees um, at the site. They have um, about 160 at, during their peak shift, and um, with that success, they um, they really need to improve their efficiencies, and that's why they're applying for a second of two of these uh, these tanks. They operate Mondays through Fridays and Saturdays as needed, 6:30 in the morning to 11:30 at night have a few shifts. And you can see their logo here, their new logo. They're, they're in the process of rebranding as Tattooed Chef. 
Um, so a few, few photos here. On the left is an aerial photo of the, uh, of the business park. And you see that, that border is actually the, the city of Paramount border. To the left of that, or which is to the west, is the Los Angeles River and then the 710 Freeway. And then to the right or to the east is um, City of Compton, the uh, Dominguez High School. In this property, there's a number, there are a number of buildings, and the, the subject building, the one we're talking about, is highlighted in blue. And you can see the, the, um, the shaded area behind it where the proposed tank would be. So the right side, we have two, two photos. Um, the top photo is the, uh, the front of the building. The bottom photo is the back side. You'll see the existing tank there. That's a 9,200-gallon um, tank. And the uh, proposed tank would be right next to it where that, um, that corrugated metal you, you see is. And here's a view. This slide shows the um, elevation. So side by side, uh, again, 9,000 gallons, uh, 29 feet in height, and it's proposed to be uh, 10, 10 feet in diameter. Um, just, yeah, very similar uh, to the other one. And I'll just go, go back one more slide so you can see the before and after. So in analysis, um, well, back back to the use. This is for for cooling. For their, their they focus on frozen food. Um, it keeps temperatures low, and has to be handled with care. There would be a host of uh, fire department requirements. This would also be reviewed by their hazmat division, their petrochem division, pe uh, petroleum and, and chemical division, and. Um, as was the previous tank that's been there since 1993. And also um, our city building and safety um, requirements would have to be met. And ongoing inspections would, um, would uh, I, think it's an, I believe it's annually with the fire department to ensure safety. It's an outdoor location. These have to be outdoors. And um, there'd be no, uh, after, upon review of this uh, application, there'd be no, it's determined there's no possibility of creating any significant environmental effects and no impacts to sensitive resources. There is a condition of, of approval included to either remove or legalize an unpermitted rear attached canopy, and there's um, a, a time frame included in, in the condition of approval that we think we believe is, is fair and, and justified. So um, with that, uh, we are recommending approval, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, this, this is a public hearing. So if there's anyone in favor or opposed, uh, nobody in favor or opposed. Okay. Any questions from our commissioners? No questions. Okay. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Condition use permit number 898. So moved. I'll second the motion to close the hearing. We have a first and we have a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Weisenberger? Yes. Commission Vice Chair Sparza? Yes. Commission Chair Brego? Yes. Okay, the next item is, is to adopt the Planning Commission Resolution Number PC20042, approving the request by Atella International to install the 9,000-gallon vertical nitrogen storage tank for the frozen plant-based food manufacturing. Can we get an approval? Is Commissioner Gutierrez all motion to approve? Barza will second it. We have a first and we have a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Weisenberger? Yes. Commission Vice Chair Sparza? Yes. Commission Chair Brego? Yes. Okay, next item is conditional use permit number 902. A request by a Victoria Palmer, Palmer Family Child Care Center to expand an existing license a large family child care into residential child care center at 15555 Brayton Street in the R1 single family residential zone. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, this item is a request to expand an existing home-based child care facility at 15555 Brayton Street. The applicant currently cares for 14 children and is requesting to expand to 28 children. State law limits how a city can regulate home-based day daycare facilities and only allows the implementation of minor regulatory requirements. Associate Planner Ivan Reyes will go over the item for you. 
Thank you, Planning Director. Uh, good evening, uh, Commissioner Chairs and members of the Commission. I'm here to present conditional, conditional use permit number 902 for Palmer Family Child Care Center. Uh, the request is to expand an existing licensed large family child care center into a residential child care center. Uh, the address is 1555 Brayton Street. It's in the R1 single family residential zone. The site is 7,560 square foot lot. And the house measures at 3,675 square feet. Uh, just to give you some background on Palmer Family Child Care, uh, they've been in operation since 2017. They are currently licensed under the Community Care Licensing Division of the California Department of Child Services. Um, the state categorizes them as a large family child care with a maximum capacity of 14 children. And due to this use, the state law limits city restrictions or denials for, for child care. Uh, here's a description of the of the business. It is uh, their hours of operation are from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays. Uh, they will have a director and floor employees. As part of the state regulations, uh, they're proposing to have a maximum capacity of 28 children. Their age ranges from months to 12 years of age. And on average, a family brings in three to four children. Um, pick up and drop off times occur at various times throughout the hours of operation. Here's a view of the of the site. The project location is um, at 15555 Brayton Street and is uh, directed west on, on Brayton. Here's a close up of the floor plan. As you can see on your left hand side, uh, it is the first floor, which has three bedrooms, a family room, a den, and a living room. Um, I want to highlight that the, the room in yellow is for staff room and it's dedicated for just employees only. The blue indicates where the child care services will be provided. Moving on to the second floor, uh, it's compromised of three bedrooms. And again, the blue indicates where the child care services will be provided. As part of this application, a traffic study was conducted by the Environment Planning Development Solutions to evaluate the proposed expansion into a residential child care center the consultant focused on the expected increase in on-street vehicle parking and any potential impact to the traffic queuing at a nearby intersection of Valandra Boulevard and Gundry Avenue. In summary, out of four total staff members in the expanded child care facility, three staff members would travel to the location from their respective homes. Therefore, the driveway can accommodate three vehicles and can accommodate the parking for all staff members. The expansion will allow for three more families to benefit from the from this established child care service. The traffic study also evaluated the traffic conditions focusing on queuing and vehicle delay. Um, as part of the report and conclusion, the project would not result in any impacts to the level of service or queuing at the intersection of Gundry Street and the Laundry Boulevard. And you can see from table one, this is a project trip generation with the total existing trip generation in the AM peak hours, which was at 7.45 AM and at PM peak hours, which was at 4.30 PM. And it also has the total existing plus the project trip generation numbers of um, vehicles in and out. And here's uh, pictures of the existing conditions of the main home. So in summary, um, this type of use will have minimal parking and traffic impacts according to the study, the traffic study that was conducted. Um, it is a use that benefits the residents in the community. Uh, no history of neighborhood complaints or code enforcement cases for this, for this property. And as I mentioned before, the city has limitations based on state law requirements for this type of use. Therefore, the recommendation is to adopt resolution number PC21003 and approve conditional use permit number 902. And this concludes my presentation. We have to answer any questions. Thank you, Ivan. Okay, this, this is a, 
A public hearing. So if we have anyone that's in favor or opposed, John? Uh, nobody in favor or opposed. No. Any questions from our commissioners? Any questions? No, my only questions was the parking and uh, the possibility of neighbors, but you touched on it. So. As long as there's no complaints. No. I, I do have a question. Uh, what's the classification that they're going from and they're going to? 25 children seems like a lot for a single family residence, although I do see it's 3,500 square feet. Yeah, so the state, um, allows for up to 14 children to be uh, viewed as long as they have, they meet the minimum employees, which they are exceeding um, on the report. Uh, there's one ratio of one teacher to one aide for every 28 children. So they're gonna have two assistants and two teachers, which compromises four employees to oversee this. And again, it's part of the state regulations as long as they're complying mm -hmm. with the state law, uh, which is regulating this use. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in compliance with that. I, I How many? What, what's the? I'm sorry. What's the 14 categorized, and then the 28 categorized as? Categorized as the yeah, large, large family or ratio. Mm -hmm. Because they're already a large family, right? right? So what are they going to? Well, they're gonna. They're <clears throat> proposing to have the maximum of 28. So well, they currently have 20 in their roster, um, but. In case they were to expand the roster of, of the child, they want to meet the minimum, the maximum amount of 28. And, and what are those called? What are those two categories called? Uh, one is large child care, which is now, and then they're moving to a child care center. Oh, so becoming a child care center yeah. instead of a family center. Yeah. Okay. But now they have 20. I thought the current was 14 maximum form. Yeah. They're adding six, six more children to their oh, so roster. So they're going to 20. There's yeah. going to be a maximum of 28. Yes. You're good, George. It was good. Go I don't, my only com concern is the uh, residents. Um, how would the city, or has anybody, have they dealt with any complaints from a child care facility that large in a residential community? We don't have one that large. No? Uh, we have um, uh, one, we have several that are up to 14 children right now. They've been operating at 14 children um, in that neighborhood. There haven't been any complaints. Um, mm -hmm. So this will, this will be a little bit new for okay. us. So I just want to clarify for me. Um, first, you mentioned that it was up to 14 and now up to 28. So we're going from the maximum allowed 14 to 28, correct? The, yeah, to, to potentially in the future, they could have the maximum allowed for 28. And I do, I, have, I share the same concern that I think 28 children is a lot for a residential facility. <laughs> but, however, I, I have walked through that area and I have friends in that neighborhood, so there seems to be always parking in the neighborhood. A lot of people do work through the day, and I never really see an issue with parking there. I have a question regarding the, did they advise the neighborhood, the, the neighbors around with a letter or something that they were going to double it? Yeah, so I was, I mean, I was before they were 14, excuse me, mm -hmm. before they were 14 and there's no complaint. But now when they're going to double it, that's my, one of my concerns. My other concern is if they checked about sexual offenders in that area, have they checked everything on that? I mean, they do that, you know. So, and also, like on sweeping day, I mean, they say they don't have a problem. So, I mean, we have, where I live, they have a, sometimes they have a problem on sweeping day. They're moving their cars here or there, you know. So that's also one of my concerns. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for your concerns. Um, I was informed that the applicant actually did go door to door to the neighbors on that street, um, pretty much indicating that, um, that they're going to be operating this and uh, kind of in good faith to make sure that um, the neighbors were okay. Um, this is something between the applicant and the, the property owners. As far as the parking, um, they're, they're ac according to the study, the traffic study, they're going to be accommodating the parking on their, on their site. Um, so the street, the off street parking, uh, relatively won't have much of an impact, uh, which is just the neighbors. And as far as the, as uh, far as, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. As far as the, um, the, uh, looking into the child, um, the sexual predator right. type of thing, that's state mandated. So they're, they should be in compliance with that, those regulations. 
And Commissioner Esparza, if I could just add, this was a public hearing, so we sent out the public hearing notices to residents, uh, to property owners and tenants within 500 feet of this, um, of this property. We didn't receive any uh, negative uh, comment on the public hearing notice. And this was uh, my concern because I've heard <clears throat> of other cities where they set up something like this and all of a sudden they say, oh, there's a sexual offender down yep. the street and so forth. So that's because you're doubling it. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. that's why I say the neighbors, they're okay with it. I mean, yeah, the neighbors are okay with it too because that seems like a lot. But the good thing is that the parking is not going to be for the. Uh, it's only going to be for the staff. How many staff did they have before? Two. Or currently. Two? Uh, currently. So they're going from two to three, including the, the owner. That makes it four, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. Well, if the neighbors are okay with it and they're okay with they're okay with, they're okay with it, I don't see anything. As long as they have uh, two cooks now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of That seems like a full-time job there. going to happen parents are going to go drop off their kids and go to work. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, <clears throat> I, I mean, I see how it's a good thing for the community because you need child care centers. I just never heard of one with that many, so it was a little concerning. Yeah. But if the neighbors are okay with it, there's not a parking issue, I guess we'll deal with it when it comes if there are any complaints. Pretty big house, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll deal with it. We're good? I'm okay. Okay. Can I get a motion to close this public hearing for conditional use permit number 902? I'll motion to close the hearing. And I will second that. Thank you. We have a first and we have a second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Weisenberger? Yes. Commission Vice Chair Sparza? Yes. Commission Chair Brego? Yes. Now, can we get adopt um, motion to adopt the Planning Commission Resolution Number PC 21003 for the request for Victoria Palmer Palmer Family Child Care Center to expand to the existing licensed large family child care into the residential child care center on the 15555 Brayton Street in the R1 zone. Does Commissioner Bautista will make a motion? Thank you. We have a first. We have a first. We have a second. Roll call. Commissioner Bautista? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Weisenberger? Yes. Commission Vice Chair Sparza? Yes. Commission Chair Brego? Yes. Next item is oral reports. Oral report, excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, Commission uh, Chair Abrego and uh, Commissioners. Uh, we did not have any items on the uh, City Council agenda last week. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, any comments from our City Attorney? No comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, John. Any comments from our, from our fellow Commissioners? Commissioners? No further comments. No comments. Staff? Yes, um, I wanted to introduce a new staff person that we have uh, sitting over next to Valerie. This is uh, Janet Ramirez. She is an uh, office assistant uh, for the planning department. In addition to her office assistant duties here, Janet works as a property manager for Beachfront Property Management. With over seven years of clerical and office experience, Janet's proficiency in responding to customer inquiries in person and over the phone is extensive. And Janet is a Paramount native, so just wanted to welcome Janet. Oh, welcome. 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 Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, let's see here. I think that is it. Our meeting is adjourned. It is 627. Our next meeting will take place on April 13, 2021, 6 p.m. Thank you. Paramount Development Review Board is called to order. Uh, roll call of members, please. Board Member Abrego? Yes. Board Member here. Bautista? Here. Board Member Weisenberger? Here. Board Vice Chair Gutierrez? Board Chair Sparza? Here. First item is the approval of minutes of February 9th, 2021. I need a motion of. Commissioner uh, Bautista, I'll second the motion. Do we have a first? And a second. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did we have a first? A... I, I don't know. Oh, I heard I heard a first heard one over there. Did you second it? <laughs> I'll, I'll motion to approve. <laughs> Thank you. Board member Brego? Yes. Board member Bautista? Yes. Board member Weisenberger? Yes. Board vice chair Gutierrez? Yes. Board chair Sparza? Any public comment? Uh, no public no public comments. Okay, new business uh, item two is uh, <clears throat> ERA number 20016, and uh, that's a request by new singular wireless GCS LLC doing business as AT&T Mobility for small cell wireless installations on utility poles in the public right of way adjacent to 8002 Rose Street in the RM multifamily residential zone in 8208 Century Boulevard in the R1 single family residential zone. Uh, uh, yes, Board Chair Esparza and board members. This application is a request by New Singular Wireless doing business as AT&T for two small cell wireless installations on utility poles in the public right-of-way. As the state limits how we can regulate daycare facilities, the federal government limits how we can regulate small cell wireless installations. And John King will give you the presentation on this item. Thank you, John, and uh, Board Chair Esparza and, and board members. AT&T Mobility. So um, this is a request, as John mentioned, to um, install and operate small cell wireless installations. I mean, release myself. Um, in installations on utility poles adjacent to the public right of way, or in the public right of way adjacent to Rose Street, 8002 Rose, which is Rose and Paramount. It's the RM zone, and 8208 Century Boulevard in the R1 zone. And the idea is, for this is for um, telecommunications, so we have in, improved um, networks and enhanced service. And um, just go through through both uh, proposals. This is the one at, at Rose and Paramount. It's uh, more so on the, on the Rose side. On the left side is, is how it looks now, and on the right is how it will look. Basically, um, to, more into what, what um, Director Carver was saying is we can't really get into, or we are not we don't have the authority to review like radio frequency or anything like that. It's more aesthetics. And we're, we worked with the, um, in this case, we worked with the applicant to go from a traditional sodium lamp, uh, like on the left, to an LED lamp, which is um, a lot more energy efficient and really supports the city's goals for uh, being a sustainable city, uh, being a green city. So you'll see it's more of a, a flat kind of, kind of a, a lamp look. Um, the height of the, the pole is 22 feet, 9 inches, has that, the cap, the topper on top, five five and a half feet, which includes the, um, the radio equipment. So the total height is 28 feet, 3 inches. And we're, um, we worked with the applicant to make sure that there's no extra, like these, those above ground utility boxes, it's more at the surface level. That's what we're looking for. So you don't really see anything on the sidewalk. You really want to look for, for aesthetics reasons and accessibility, sidewalk ac access. Here's the other side, similar. This is on Sentry. Again, an LED lamp. This one is 29 feet, three inches on the, the pole, five and a half feet for the, for the top. Total height, 34 feet and nine inches. So that contains, same thing, uh, antennas and radios. And then again, the vault is, would be a surface level. Public Works, the Paramount Public Works Department would um, have to, to well, the applicant would have to submit a, a, for an encroachment permit with the Public Works Department. The Public Works Department would issue it. The county, Los Angeles County Public Works Department, uh, also has some permitting uh, purview. The installations would utilize the existing infrastructure, and the design is intended to, to minimize, again, the, the visual, the aesthetic impacts the, to the best we can. And uh, this is in compliance with FCC, the FCC regulations that would not generate vibration noise or other nuisances. And um, again, this is in the end is to, um, to help us out with our, you know, we're using data more, more and more. So we're recommending approval and I'm happy to answer any questions. All righty, anybody? Any I, I have a have question. A question. Yes, Commissioner Bautista, how many of these uh, installations are we looking at? Maybe I missed it, but. In this case it's two, um, to, to date, 
That's a, that's a good question. If just throwing out a number, I'd say 12. We have about 12 to 15 so far. Last 2020 was a quiet year. Maybe it was because of COVID. I'm not sure. Um, but we can anticipate more in the in the coming months. And they're all going to be in this light bulb type of fixture, or they're going to change aesthetically, or so maybe some in buildings or other. Most of them are utility poles. Some are on um, wood wood light poles where the you know the wires. Yeah. Um, some are uh, go on existing poles. Most are actually replacement poles, such as this one. Okay. Thank you. I do have a question on the uh, diagram. There was an arrow pointing and said volt. There was nothing there. So is that where it's going to go or is it underground? That's, that's, that's exactly right. It's basically under, underground oh, surface perfect. level. So it's that's great. It doesn't look like a refrigerator out okay, there. Okay, okay. I know you mentioned during the presentation about a vault box. I was wondering if that's going to go there or that's replacing the old vault boxes. Got it. Any other questions? No. Okay, I need a motion order to approve a request by New Singular Wireless PCS LLC doing business as AT&T for small cell wireless installations on utility poles in the public right of way adjacent to 8002 Rose Street in the RM Multiple Family Residential Zone and 8208 Century Boulevard in the R1 Single Family Residential Zone. This is Board Member Gutierrez. I'll go ahead and motion to approve. Uh, Weisenberger seconds. Second. Board Member Abrego? Yes. Board Member Bautista? Yes. Board Member Weisenberger? Yes. Board Vice Chair Gutierrez? Yes. Board Chair Esparza? Yes. Okay, we follow up to item number three. And that is ERA number 21003. And that's a request by Liz Astarchia. I hope I said the right name. Blue Valve Studio for McGraw. McGraw USA Machinery to construct a 4,297 square foot two story industrial building at 15359 Illinois Avenue in the M2 heavy manufacturing zone. Uh, yes, uh, Board Chair Esparza and board members. Uh, this item is a request to construct an industrial building at 15359 Illinois Avenue. This is a former location uh, many, well, not many years ago, but numerous years ago of Gillen's Market. The Development Review Board approved a similar proposal <clears throat> at this site in 2019, but the property owner was in, unable to start the project prior to the end of the one year approval period. John King will give you more details. Thank you, John. Thank you, board members. Like Braun USA Machinery. So they're based out of um, uh, South America. Um, actually, I'm, I actually forget which, which country, but so they're, they want to bring their, um, they make machinery and they have clients here in, um, in the United States. So hence the, the USA uh, tack on to their, um, their main name. And um, so here they want to, and it's a showroom. There would be no um, industry, no manufacturing, but basically a, a showroom. So the, in, within a 4,297 square foot, two-story building at the north, uh, northwest of uh, Illinois and Jefferson, 5, 000, the lot is 5,000 square feet. And, and uh, as Director Carver mentioned, it's, this, is, this really is a redo. It was approved by the Development Review Board November 2019. And your typical conditions include a one-year um, approval period, which lapsed. Um, the owner was going back and forth on whether to continue with the same uh, designer the architect, the, for the architectural plans, and in the end, um, decided to re retain her, retain her uh, services. So she's back on, and the same. It's essentially the, the same project. Here's a photo of um, how it looks. This, this was taken last week. So um, the former Gillen's Market has, has been vacant. I'd like to say 2013. It's been vacant. There were some number number of offers to or ideas, um, you know, to be a sandwich shop and a few things that just didn't, just did not work out. So the um, the property owners ended up selling, and this owner is is ready to go with with their proposal. Um, here's a site plan. So you can see it's uh, more or less a, a square building with some access off of um, Illinois and also access off of Jefferson. Plenty of green. There's plenty of, of landscape proposed. It would be a drought tolerant landscaping. Again, meeting our goals for um, sustainability in, in Paramount. 
And this is how it would look. Here's a, a nice rendering. And so it's a very contemporary looking building. You see those decorative louvers facing um, Illinois, large storefront windows, um, plenty of vines and, and greenery on the, on the wall, which, you know, it's attractive. It um, absorbs um, dust and, you know, uh, particulates in, in the air. Uh, so it does, greenery does a good job of that. And not only that, in, there's been a history of, of, unfortunately, some vandalism on, on the walls in that area. So you don't you won't have to worry about that once the uh, the vines make it all the way to the to the top of that side. So it's, we think it's a good project, and we uh, recommend approval. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Any commissioners have any questions? Not me. No questions. No questions for me. Uh, need a motion in order to approve a request by Lisbeth Bastaracia, Blue Velvet Studio for McGraw Blunt, USA Machinery to construct a 4,297 square foot two story industrial building at 15359 Illinois Avenue and the M2 Heather Manufacturing Zone. So, Board Member Abrego, I, I won't make a motion to approve. Commissioner Bautista, I'll second that motion. Board Member Brego? Yes. Board Member Bautista? Yes. Board Member Weisenberger? Yes. Board Vice Chair Gutierrez? Yes. Board Chair Sparza? Yes. Item four, any uh, comments from uh, board members? No. Nope. Staff? No, sir. The Paramount Development Review Board is adjourned. April 13, 2021 at 7 p.m. What's up? Oh, thank you. Um, I'd like to call to order the Paramount Economic Development Board for March 9th, 2021. Roll call, please. Board Member Brego? Here. Board Member Sparza? Thanks. Board Member Gutierrez? Present. Board Vice Chair Bautista? Here. Board Chair Weisenberger? Here. Approval of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, can we get a motion to approve the minutes from February 9th? This is Commissioner Bautista. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I will second it. Okay, roll call, please. Board Member Brego? Yes. Board Member Sparza? Same. Board Member Gutierrez? Yes. Board Vice Chair Bautista? Yes. Board Chair Weisenberger? Yes. Um, any public comments tonight, John? No public comments. Okay. Item number two, uh, oral reports. Yes. Uh, John King will give you a report on broadband internet access. Hey, thank you, John. Thank you, uh, Chair Weisenberger, board members. So broadband band internet, um, you know, there's... That's basically the, the platinum level of, of internet access. And this really, in terms of um, uh, equitability, being equitable throughout the state and getting the same type of access throughout, that's, that's really the heart of this discussion. Um, get some background. Uh, 2007, the Public Utilities Commission, they authorized the California Advanced Services Fund, uh, CASF. And then it was signed into, into law by Governor Schwarzenegger um, uh, by SB 1193 that kind of put it all together. Purpose of all this is to, to bridge the, what we call the digital divide. Um, the, it, it is kind of a fact, you know, the internet is everywhere, but there, for whatever reason, it's not 100%. There are many homes, and we know this more so going through the last year with, with COVID and, and home distance learning and, and children, some children having better access than others. The, the digital divide is real. Um, and this is to... You know, we're the economic, economic development board. So the main thrust here is it promotes economic growth, job, job creation, and the substantial social benefits of advanced information and communications technologies. Um, so how so we calling for the deployment of high quality communications out, out to all Californians. Um, that CSF funding uh, we found and this legislature has found is not um, entirely accessible to most communities to, to, or to all. And the current structure is behind a number of other economies. So just want to put this out there. There's a, there's a bill 
Senate Bill 4, SB 4 is the Broadband for All Act, and it's authored by Senator Gonzalez, is our, our local representative. Um, and again, COVID-19, that's that, hi, that really does highlight the inequities of internet access. You hear about um, teachers and school children, children getting kind of knocked off their connection. And this, this bill would require the uh, Public Utilities Commission to expand the CASF program, creating a more equitable funding mechanism and allowing for, for local governments like cities and counties and service providers to apply for grants and to better leverage other funding opportunities, and those opportunities being like uh, federal opportunities. Expands eligibility areas and to finance higher broadband speeds and raise the standards of approved projects. Um, here in Paramount, we do have a legislative platform that the uh, city council adopted a few months ago, very recently. And uh, this, um, this bill aligns with that legislative platform. Mayor Lemons actually signed a letter of support last month. And um, so as the bill goes through the works, we are tracking it and, and um, hoping that it, that it does uh, go through, get signed by the governor. With that, Paramount will, would be able to apply for grant funding, be better positioned to do so, and then improved services will, will again create reliable communication networks for essential services and, and everybody. The keyword is all. So you can see, here's a map. This is um, from the CASF portion of the Public Utilities Commission. And, and you can see it's very limited, those orangish, yellowish areas, um, not sure what color that is, uh, where they are CASF eligible. So one thing is to expand eligibility areas. And I'm looking at this and I, and I see a lot of this is, a lot of these areas are uh, mobile home parks in California, in, in, in Paramount. There is a mobile home park called the Californians. So I think that's why I mentioned that. Um, so that's really it. Just want to give you a little overview there and, um, and let you know the, of, of where the city stands on SB4. Any questions? I'm happy to, to answer them. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you, John. Okay, move to item number three, comments. Board members, any comments? How about from our staff tonight, any comments? No, sir. Okay, in that case, uh, we will move to uh, adjournment of the Economic Development Board for this evening. We'll meet again April 13th at 6 p.m.